So the mesh surface tool contains all the functionality of the mesh geometry surface tool. We can load attributes from another surface, use property settings or sizing options, uh, choose any element shape, mapped or free mesh, um, and any of the advanced options we're accustomed to as well. So let's take a look at this. So the mesh surface tool, right off the top, we can use mesh attributes if you had assigned property cards to this mesh. We could use those mesh attributes. We could to create a property card on the fly, much like we can do in other uh, commands in FEMAP. I'm going to cancel that, and we're just going to use uh, plot elements in this one for now. Uh, we have sizing options, from which we'll look at. The mesh size, let's just change this to 0.2. And uh, our element shape or, or for our tri elements, tri six, quad four, or quad eights. Most commonly, we're going to be, you know, the default here is the quad four. And that's the most common thing we're going to use. I uh, uh, have never had the opportunity to use a quad eight or tri six, but we're going to just use the quad four. And we can select our surface, and you notice it goes off and meshes the surface based on the settings we've we've applied here. So let's take a look at this one. Since we uh, mapped everything out, uh, we want to be able to do nice mapped meshes. So what I want to do is point out a couple of things: the mapped meshing options, minimum elements on boundaries. I'm going to select three elements minimum on any boundary. And I'm going to leave this auto mapped approach set. If I turn that off, it will allow me to go in and set a mapped approach on any surface I want, much like the mesh, mesh control approach on surface command. So I'm going to go back and turn my auto approach on. And what I'm going to do is just go through these and go ahead and mesh these surfaces. What we could do to speed this process up a little bit is to use our shift key and drag a box around them. And it uh, missed one there. So we've got a nice mapped mesh. So the most uh, common mesh sizing up here is the size all connect. Uh, so we'll leave that there. I've got some examples in the uh, slide deck of what this means. If you turn the mesh sizing options off, it will allow you to change the element shape, the meshing method, or any advanced options without changing the element size. Size all connect, again, most common and default. Resizes all the curves and uh, the adjacent surfaces as well that share curves. And then size all disconnect. Uh, that um, will allow you to change the mesh size, remesh the surface, but it makes no attempt to connect it up. And the mesh sizing option, size internal free edges. Uh, so what what is done here is there are 11 surfaces along this bead, and it sized all of the curves, and I can show you this in the geometry, but we, we won't necessarily go through it. It sizes all of the internal free edges of the geometry without sizing these. So I'll mesh this. Let's uh, just put a free mesh in here, 0.7, and uh, we'll grab our geometry like that. And what this would do is if we size all these free edges, and we'll just change this to 0.4 and select these. And it should have worked, but it, it did for me. So we will come back to that one. Uh, so the size, all free edges, the element shape we've talked about, 
free mesh, I want to talk a little bit more about the free mesh and the mapped mesh. So the free mesh, there's been a couple of, you know, free meshing is always a little faster. If we uh, grab a surface, it is going to mesh our geometry a little faster using a free mesh than it would if we tried to. And now the size all internal free edges work fine. You can see it sized everything except that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to change this back to size all connect and uh, mesh this piece again and show you a couple of things that have, are in the uh, free mesh now. Uh, the free mesh the max quads, you can see we have some triangular elements in here, but what the max quads does is it tries to go off and create a mesh that is entirely of quad elements. And you see we, this one did pretty good. We have one try right here. We can go into our model info tree and look at our element types by shape. And you can see there's only 27 tri elements in that whole surface there. Going back to our meshing tools, we have one over here. And many times you can leave this on the uh, max quads. Go back to your mesh sizing and just simply change the mesh size. And you see now we eliminated the try around that boundary. And you can go around and do the same thing as well. Again, we eliminated that one. We gained a couple here. But we can go and clean this up using the mesh sizing tool many times. Going back to the mesh surface tool, uh, there's another one, quad tri layers. And this works well if you're trying to mesh around a hole. I'm going to turn my geometry off for a minute. Trying to mesh around a hole or any other loop that you just want a good quality quad mesh around the edge. You don't really care if you have a mapped mesh, but any other one that you want to just have a nice quality tri uh, nice quality quad mesh around the holes. So we could do the same thing with the mesh surface tool here. Quad tri layers, we can go up to three or four and probably get by with that on this surface. And you can see it creates quad layers around all of the internal boundaries and, uh, or makes that attempt anyway. All right, mesh elements between boundaries. We talked about that a few minutes ago. We took a look at uh, at this model. We use three and mesh those boundaries around our map. Okay, surface growth factor works the same way in the mesh sizing. It will cause the mesh to grow on large surfaces. You can watch the free edges here. Uh, as you mesh, you, anytime you change your mesh size or your meshing attributes, we change that to 0.3 and remesh our geometry. Again, it's going to show us our free edges around our mesh. Any of the advanced options are also co-located in the toolbox and the mesh uh, commands, the mesh control commands as well. So you have those right here at your fingertips as well to go along with the mesh surface tool.